everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and we're going live today to do our beautiful Princess Llama. So I'm gonna start from the very beginning with the traceable, so you can really get a good feel about how all this works. So I'm loving this process. Um, we were not able to use these very often in our studio shows for the longest time, just because we always had about 500 people, and that's a lot of graphite paper. And a lot <laughs> So we would use these templates that we could pass around. But now that we're all working at home, a lot of us are, this is a really great way to work. So we're utilizing this a lot more now. Um, so basically I've got, this is what you get in the mail with our kit. This is the traceable. So here's what I love about it. There's so much more detail than there normally is that's just all worked out for you. So there's no more guessing about placement and all those fine lines because they're all provided and then we even have the graphite paper for you so i use a little bit of tape and place it underneath here i always make sure that the really black side slick shiny black side is facing down because that's what's going to transfer the graphite down to your canvas this more dull finish here that's a little bit lighter gray that's what faces up and then i have a little bit of tape here i do have to kind of keep an eye on it i think it's easier to keep it flat of course, I have to show y'all and then you wouldn't be able to see it. So, but I do think it can be a good idea to keep it flat. That way it keeps it more secure. And then this little just scotch tape just works really well. It's real easy. And then I am going to go ahead and use a, I've got a little colored pencil here. It's a different color. That way I can see where my lines have been. So it really helps me understand where I've been. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start. And I'm gonna just start making a pressure over the top. I'm also, this is a Prisma pencil, which I love because it is a little bit softer, so I know it won't poke into the paper too. But just any color pencil will work. And so you can already see how I can easily see where I've been now. That part is key. I'm gonna keep my thumb up here so that I do not lose where I'm at because that makes me nervous. It was already starting to lift off. All right, so we've got our little crown here, and then our little rose. Now the good news about the rose is I have that work done in there for you so that you can actually come back in over the top once your paint's dry, and you can do all the line work over the top. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that part since I'm just gonna be painting solid colors anyway, and then I just paint on over the top. So at first, they look like big lumpy circles for everybody. So that part of the trace is not really that necessary here in the beginning. Because we're just going to paint right over it anyway. So I'll just go ahead and just kind of leave it like little lumpy circles. All right, so we've got our, oh, one more. And then there's a rose. Okay, now we've got a cute little leaf up here. Another one here. See, and we've never had the ability to be able to capture this much detail with a template, so that's why I'm super excited about these. I love them. All right, little loopy leaves. I think it also helps your hand be able to, you know, when, when you do trace, I think it helps beginners go through the motions of what that feels like to do that stroke too. So let's do a little lift. You can see how it's, it's transferring, so exciting. All right, I'm holding steady here. And I've got a cute little llama ear. Cute little llama ear here. All right. Let's see, I can see that I do not have blue line there, so I'll go over those leaves. And then I've got another cute little daisy here. More cute 
little leaves. Hi, David, what's up? <laughs> Yeah, you haven't seen this process yet. These are the new traceables. So I'm using graphite paper. It's the ultimate cheat. It's wonderful. And plus Joe's happy because he doesn't have to do uh, templates. <laughs> Wish you could say me too. Hi, Melinda. Yeah, this is a fun one. All right, so now, lots of little details. Well, I gotta watch my knees. I'm holding onto this so tight, I don't want to get it unsteady, and I just, I just noticed my knees were all locked. That would be bad to faint in front of everybody. <laughs> let's not, let's not faint today. <laughs> not today. I fainted in a school play one time. So I was in costume and I was having to wear these really high heels and I locked my knees and I passed out. Hanging out, just bored. We just went for a walk outside. Joe's trying to lose weight. <laughs> since we ate too many carbs over the lockdown. We went off, we fell off the, the wagon. I've been confessing our sins with every, with every class today. So he walked up the hill, backwards, forwards, Walk by the blowout. There's actually people in there drinking right now in the middle of the day. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like, oh my gosh. All right, let's check. Oh, we're looking good, looking good. All right, this little leaf. I don't know how people drink in the middle of the day. Can't do it. Ah, oh, my hand. <laughs> I'm gonna move it down a little bit. So again, I think this is a lot easier if you place this flat, which y'all can all do easily on a kitchen table. And then you just, you know, you wanna help hold it steady while you do this. It's really hot outside. But you know, it's August, so that's to be expected. I'm getting super, super close. I have this cute little face to do, so I'm gonna do the eyelashes. I'll tell you, this little llama princess, she is a True. She's definitely got uh, eyelash extensions, I'm pretty sure. So I'll just, I'm gonna be painting the rest of that in in a minute, so I'll just kind of tag that outside edge. And then we got a cute little nose. Cute little nostrils, if that's such a thing. I don't know that nostrils are cute, but they're very necessary. All right, we're almost done. This is so exciting. Howdy, they're so good. How are things with you? working on that little beard. Oh, 
almost done. Man, I'm getting my uh, workout in. Little curly cues. All right, I think I've got everything done. So I think I didn't do, and I mean, I'll go ahead and just in case anybody else, some people might be uneasy with me not doing those. So. They're really not necessary at this point because you're just going to have to come back in and do it later. But all right, that should be everything. All right, so you lift up. Isn't that beautiful how that works? I love it. This is so exciting. All right, so our whole face is there. And then these are definitely reusable too. You can get a lot of use out of graphite paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side. So actually, one more thing on that. So you could just lightly untape, be, you know, kind of delicate when you do lift off. See, it comes undone pretty easily. And then you can reuse this. But every time you get a kit from us, we give you like two sheets of it. So there's, you'll get a lot of mileage out of that. All right, so good. <clears throat> Excuse me, there we go. Okay, hold up, hold up, water. Okay, so I went walking with my honey bear. What was I thinking? It's so late in the day. I'm like, I'm sweating now because we're, we, just, we just walked in the door from going outside. It was really, this is not a good idea to go walking right now, by the way. Mm -mm. It's like super hot outside. Even Ira was like, what are y'all doing? Ira's my dog, by the way. She's like, y'all are nuts, y'all are nutty parents. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now. All right, I'm better now. <clears throat> okay, so I have my beautiful Sharpie. Um, so I wanna make sure that y'all can see this. And also, I just wanna be able to, you know, if I do any painting, I wanna make sure and not lose the work that I've done. And I've already, the beautiful thing about the traceable too, is it already works out everything that's in the foreground so you don't have to position templates in a certain way so i'm just a really big fan of these i'm super excited i actually used to use these all the time in college especially with watercolors and primarily when i would have to do portraiture and landscapes things like that um it's very very nice little trick for complex things. So it's been around a really long time. Really fun little trick. A lot of professional artists use graphite paper, not just beginners. So it's, a, it's definitely something that's used. Now, when I was in college, that was my major, so they never allowed me to use it in class. But, because they were, yeah, they were a little serious about the education part of it. <laughs> like, I had to really know how to draw. So, you know, that's okay. But when I would do stuff for my family, like especially um, commission work and things like that, and you have to make sure you get things very perfectly done Boy, graphite paper could be a real jewel. All right, so again, just firming up these lines so that y'all can see them really well while I go through the painting process. And that cute little ear again. Um, also, one other thing about this process here that I'm doing, I do this, I like the look of the stylized hard line, but I also do this a lot just for visual so that you can see it really well. But not everybody is a fan of the hard line with style. And they like softer edges around what you paint. So just kind of keep that in mind. I usually recommend with beginners, just stick with the soft line first and kind of see what you like. So 
it kind of just depends. Did y'all hear that sneeze? That's my honey bear sneezing. <laughs> Yeah, I think it says you have some of your art projects you've been working on and you'll send it to me in a message. Yay, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Lots of little details. Gosh, what day is it? It's like Thursday. I was thinking this week has gone by so fast. I went to see my niece get married this last weekend. Young love. <laughs> so it's been a really busy week. Because normally for me, it's just work, work, work. But I actually took some time out to go be with family. So it was awesome. And the young couple, my niece and I guess nephew-in-law, they're in Florida right now. I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> Just a little. That sounds so fun. All right, so again, I'm leaving those roses blank because we're just gonna paint right over the top of them anyway. Still working on these little tiny flowers. Beautiful eyelashes. That's pretty, and you can actually, I might just sharpie all those in. Just to, boy, that's a lot easier, just to sharpie in the eyelashes. If you want to be a purist about it, boy, you can absolutely paint it in with a little bit, but I'm telling you, this is nice. I will say you can touch it up with a little, you could cheat. You could just do, definitely cheating, but. You could do like half Sharpie, half paint. So you get your base down with your Sharpie and then you go over the top of it as much as you can with the paint and then nobody will ever know the difference. They won't even see the Sharpie anymore. Beautiful. Okay, so now we got the little nose. And then now it connects. Boy, it looks like a little alien right there, just a little alien face. <laughs> I don't know. All right, a little curly cues. Fun little beard, kind of. I don't know what they technically call that on a llama, but yeah. Okay, so cute, cute, cute. I am loving this. Okay, so here we go. We got it all worked out now. I used to do all this before I would start the class and I get so many questions now from beginners on how to do this. <laughs> so I'm thinking I probably should start including it in the class so that you know what's happening. Cause there's some stuff sometimes to work out on how to do all that. 
Okay, so now what I wanna do, um, this is a really fun, easy painting, but I'm gonna start with the lights first. And then so here in this face, I'm gonna go ahead and start with those lighter, like really, really super light shades of gray. And I'm going to start with my Mama brush. So in your kit, you've got three brushes. We've got Mama, and then we've got Little Buddy, and then we have a Little Bit brush. Let me make sure I've got the right one here. All right, so a little bit. So three brushes here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with a bigger brush and my white paint. And we just want a teeny, teeny amount of black. So just barely touch into the black. See how small that is? Super tiny. So I'm gonna push that in because I want this to be very, very light gray. And then if you wanna warm it up just a little bit, give it like some creamy undertones, you can just barely touch into that little bit of primary yellow. And then let's push that in there too. And that's looking a little too buttery in my taste, so I'm gonna go ahead and push in a lot more white. So we're gonna neutralize that. Make it very, very, very light. Super light. So we wanted it to be just like an antique white is really what we're going for. So I need to pull in a lot more white there. All right, so I am really happy with that. And then I can go ahead and actually, I don't mind, mixing with mama but i'm going to go ahead and switch gears to my little bit all right so i'm going to go ahead and push into that antique white and i'm going to be a little bit sloppy with it as i approach the flowers do a little bit of an overpaint, and see that's why i like the sharpie because i know it'll bleed through and i haven't lost that work So I'll go ahead and paint into the face so that I have this really nice, pretty antique white done. Kind of paint into that floral arrangement there. I'll touch that back up here in a moment. So no worries on that. just continue to kind of get real close to those little eyelashes. Even if I kind of barely go over it, I can touch that back up again. Let's go ahead and do a little overpaint there. Just to get really good coverage over the surface. All right, and then as we get into the little curly cues, then I'll start to echo into that space a little bit too. So little curly cues. And I'll be coming back into this now with a little bit of a darker gray then i'm going to work in just a little bit here so i've got my little bit brush let's touch into a little bit of that black nice fine point and then while the paint's still wet then we'll kind of softly blend into that so i'm getting more of a darker charcoal color and we're going to softly go into that little bearded area I'm gonna to switch to a little bit of a smaller, I've got different sizes of my little bits here. So I'm gonna go a little bit smaller here. So I definitely like how I still get that nice soft blend. And I love, this is why I love the Sharpie, because I can still see it. And then I'm able to work into that wet paint 
right over the top and get that nice soft blend. And otherwise, see if that were a pencil, it'd be completely covered and you would just be having to sort of navigate through it on your own. Now the, the fix on that, if you have to come back in with the traceable, you certainly can and kind of re-firm those lines up. But this definitely allows you to work into wet areas and still see your undercoat, your underline, and then work back into it. And that's the really helpful thing too. All right, so we've got that really fun little beard here. And then let's see, look at my model over here. So I've got a little bit of my nose. It's a little bit of a darker gray, but not super dark. Still using a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and just fill into the little nose here. All right. Yay, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some roses now. We'll get started on that next. here I want my mama brush again so here's mama and let's go ahead and do let's see let's do we're gonna do a couple of different colors we're gonna do some of our magenta with some white to make a light pink so I just put some of that right there in my plate and then let's do some violet all right, so this is my violet, and I'm gonna go ahead, place this on my plate as well. So with the violet, I can go ahead and push a little bit of white into that, and that will give me a really pretty lavender color, which is super pretty. And I just start by kind of, you know, grabbing a little bit of each and pushing them together until I get it to where I kind of want it. I still want it to be a little bit light. So I'm gonna go ahead and, it's about right where I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and push into that. Let's do another lavender over here. And on there. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out into the water and then let's dry off. Okay, mama and bath. We're gonna come back into a little bit of this white and then magenta, primary magenta. So this is gonna bring us to a, a lighter pink. And then that's what I'll do for the other roses. this one and see now you see what I'm talking about with at first roses just look like big lumpy circles so all of that work those little tiny lines you don't need it now if you're just super stressed about it you don't know how you're gonna pull off the pattern of course I teach you but there's also that way to come back in with the transfer paper over the top of this and even work in the line work over the top of the roses after it's completely dry. So that's even something you can do too. All right, so that's beautiful. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with just pure white and little bit brush. It's the smallest liner brush here. And then I'm gonna just make what looks like little half circles. Or like parentheses, either way. And I'll do this on all of the roses, just regardless of the color, it doesn't even really matter. See, I can do it on that lavender too.
And as I'm doing this little shape that kind of looks like a little parentheses, you can actually just kind of wiggle the brush a little bit too. I think that's helpful. So that those lines don't look, you don't want them to be too precise. I have to be a little bit smaller when I get into the smaller shape of the rows. Now, another step on the rose. This is so fun, I love doing roses. So now I'm gonna come in with the darkest color. So, cleaned off my little bit brush. Basically just did a little swirl into the water, a little bit of pressure, firm pressure, looks like this, into the water. As you apply pressure, it releases that paint. And then when you pull out of the water, then of course you wanna make sure and dry off, make it to where it's just moist, and then you're all good. All right, so now I'm gonna come into the darkest shade now of this primary magenta. We're gonna start by making a little spot right in the middle of that flower, just like that. And then we just repeat the very same pattern that we just did, little half circles. Little spot, that's a little shadow right in the middle. Now when we get to the purple, we're We'll switch gears to the violet, and that'll be really pretty. All right, so awesome. So I'm gonna give a little bit of bath. Dry it off. Little spot of violet, just right in the center. Just a little touch, like a little comma and then lift off with a light hand. And if you ever feel like you get too dark or too light, you can always push back with the other color a little bit and just rework it. Lots of flexibility there. Hi, Christopher, welcome. All right, little spot in the center. Yippee, I love it. Okay, so now, See, what have we got going on with the ears? Okay, so with the ears, I've got some pink happening in the ears. I also have a little bit of white, that soft gray. So let's, let's come back in with some of this antique white again. Come in right into those little ears. Probably should have done this earlier. A little bit of overpaint won't hurt. I'm just gonna make sure I really get into that whole section of the ear. And then this is my little bit brush again. All right, now I've got some pink to come into that little part of the ear there. I spent some paint on my hat. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna push my brush into the pink, which is, this is primary magenta and a little bit of white. So we're going back into that. This is exactly what we used 
uh, for the poses. So as the base. Now I'm gonna do a little twist into the brush. So that helps rotate it into a nice fine point. And then I have to get to where I can see it. So pardon my, but I'm really getting in the way here. But I'm gonna go ahead and take this up to a point. A little line. And then I got this little guy here. So we start at the little point and then it kind of flares out a little bit. All right, so that's our fun little, those are cute little ears. All right, and then we've got some flowers to do. I've also got these little rosy cheeks on my model over here that I'm looking at. So let's go ahead and sort of forget. Let's make little circles in here. Kind of feels like you make little Cheerios. Kind of fun. And then the little mouth, let's see what's happening. Hmm, like a different color over there, it's interesting. I don't know. All right, let's do a little touch of pink in here too. Just softly feather that out, just right into that little world right there. And then I've got a little bit. Now I gotta be careful because I'm working with my canvas like this. And so I have to be really careful that I don't get any water run. So every time I wash out my brush, I gotta make sure and dry it off really well. So you wanna be careful like that. Or just lay your canvas flat and that's the safest thing to do. All right, now I'm gonna spin into some black and I'm gonna go ahead and firm up these little nostrils there. Wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the crown now. Lovely rag, dry it off. So I've got primary yellow already on my plate, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some cadmium yellow. We'll do a little bit of that. All right, so a little touch. Let's just, let's just push both those together. So I'm going to go ahead and paint into the crown. And then again, here's my little trick where if you need to stabilize your hand, then you can rest the weight of your hand on your pinky. And that helps stabilize your hand where you can make motions, like little straight lines, get into little small areas. All right, so we have three circles up there. So you can either paint into those or you can do a really fun little trick that I know, which is taking a big brush, handle, dip into that color, that same color. Make sure I get enough on there. There it is. And then you can just press straight forward. And that makes a fun little dot. I actually needed more paint on that first one. Fine enough. Just reload. Push that back down. That's better. And it's really easy even just to touch up a second time. So, like I didn't quite get in the paint on the first run on that, but next time we did really well. So, we're good on that. Okay, so now we've got some fun little flowers in here. And these are actually little white daisies. So I've got my little bit brush again. I'm gonna go in with pure white. And we're gonna go ahead and push that into these little shapes. So just fun little petal shapes in here. Got one more up here. So with this stroke, you really just hold the brush like a pencil. 
that'll give you more control to get into that little area. And the little petals are kind of like little teardrops. So there's a little bit of a loop at the top. So you can kind of start at the base and then loop out to the end. So start in the center and then loop out. All right, now I've got a different flower happening here. I'm gonna go ahead and make that kind of a brighter, let's do a bright yellow, that'd be fun. I added a little bit of uh, white to it, help lighten it up a little bit. All right, that's looking so, so good. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with my little dot trick again and that yellow. Actually, I need more paint because I was struggling to get enough last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got some hearty dollops here on my plates, you can see. And then I'm gonna press right into that. See, now that's a lot better. And then I can go ahead and just push that right on over the surface. That little center dot. And then this guy, I'm gonna actually go in with that magenta. So I'm gonna take the same brush trick, push into the magenta this time, and then I'll hit this right in the middle. So that's really fun there too. All right, now I am going to go in to all these beautiful little leaves. Um, I'm going to start with some lavender. We have some unexpected fun lavender leaves in the model that I like. So we've got this violet over here to the side, a little bit of white. Using my little bit brush. The belly of the brush gets too, you know, full. You can always just kind of twist it out. That'll twist it back into a nice fine point. And then I want this one to be lavender. So I'm gonna follow the line out. And then just fill this in. And then let's do one more fun one here. So let's do the stem and then fill into each little leaf. It's just like coloring book painting. <laughs> My favorite kind, because it's relaxing. All right, there we go. That's so lovely. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now I wanna, I'm excited to get into these. So I've got some Beautiful colors over here. Let's talk about what those are. All right, so I have Viridian, which is that dark one right there. And then I've got Cadmium Green, which is that middle one. And then I have Bright Yellow Green, which is that one right there. So I like to have those ready to go so I can just kind of Mix into them, touch into them, get little highlights when I want to or darker shades when I want to. So I am gonna make sure that my brush is clean and just moist. All right, so I'm gonna push into this Viridian color. A little bit of that cadmium to start with. You can also do a little bit of white in here too if you wanna lighten it up a little bit. You can see what that does. That's also really pretty. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start with the stem. So definitely, real quick, let me show you. Twist it out. That'll rotate into a nice fine point. And then that helps me do that stem with a lot of precision. And then I go ahead and just do the little leaves. So 
so, so pretty. Now let's dip into, just for fun, just to show you the difference, I'm gonna dip into a little bit of this lighter green. See, that's really nice too. So you can kinda hit some of that lighter green in there too, just a little push of that. It's a little more like a spring green, and then the other one kind of pushes more to like a teal. Either way, really lovely. And the paint we sell with the kit, it's uh, Royal and Lang Nickel. It is heavy bodied, so that means it's very thick. And so sometimes you, I think students have found it to be very helpful to add a little bit of water to the mix sometimes to get it to spread more um, fluidly, if you will. So my only caution there is just make sure that you do put the canvas flat on your table. If you're gonna add just a little tiny amount of water to it. It's definitely fun to play with to help you spread the paint out and get into tiny little areas. This really needs to be flat. So I'm just kind of dabbing into all three colors for fun. Pushing them through every little tiny leaf. We've got more. There's a lot of these. Do that little stem there. You know, once those leaves get in there, and it all starts to make sense, then it frames everything in really nicely. So if you maybe couldn't tell that something was a flower, having that little green leaf nearby says, yes, it's a flower. You just framed it in. And then these are little loopy leaves. So with these, okay, first of all, what I wanna do is make sure and kind of twist out again, make sure I get a nice fine point. Start at the end here, and then you go up a little loop and then come back down. All right, and then this fun little leaf shape, it's kind of like making the letter V, but upside down. But it feels the same to your hand. And I just touched into a little bit of just pure viridian there, just to Bring in that little leaf there. Now I've got two leaves overlapping, so I'm definitely gonna switch gears and make the one in the back just a little bit lighter so that I've got contrast between those two. Just a real subtle shift there. Just like that. Now I'm getting into really small little areas, so I am using my little trick where I rest the weight of my hand on my pinky when I can. See, I'm running into wet paint areas, so I have to be real careful, so I'll go ahead and, I don't get to do it every time, but so my crown is dry, so I'm just resting my little pinky there. So cool, I love it. Neato, okay. Let me look at my model over here, make sure I'm getting to be in a good spot. 
Okay, so now I need to do a little bit of some outline work just to kind of refine some shapes a little bit. So a little bit is awesome. And I'm gonna go in with a dark charcoal gray. So I'm gonna push in just a tiny amount of white into this black. Just a little bit of white in there too. So it softens it just a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and come around this little, this cute little nose. And I keep coming back in, when I come back into the paint, I just, I keep spinning it every time. Because I definitely wanna make sure, see this is a really tiny line. So I really wanna make sure that I have a nice tiny line when I come back. Because the bristles can fill up quickly with paint. And what they'll do is they'll spread out on you and then they'll make a big thick line. So, just kinda wanna watch that a little bit. Now, just notice some of my eyelashes. I'm gonna to touch into a little bit of this just pure black, actually, and just kinda of really light hand. It's like we're putting on makeup, so I'm gonna do a little bit of this eyeliner all the way across. And then a teeny tiny touch of that black, and I'll just kinda, of, you know, just act like you're putting on mascara. And just kind of go in that same stroke, the same direction. Start at the base and then go out and then lift off with a light hand. And this will bring a few more little delicate little feathery strokes to your eyelashes. And see, we have that really nice Sharpie base but see now, when you come over the top with all this paint, see, you're not even gonna see that Sharpie anymore. So, but it was very helpful to have that as a starting place. It made the process way, way easier than if you didn't have that there at all. All right, so now I'm back to the charcoals and add a little bit more white to this, kind of soften it up a little bit, and then We'll add little, just light touches of some outlines. And then definitely up here on the little ears. See those have been, they had a little bit of that overpaint happening around the edge. And so it kind of dulled that ending and I wanted that to be more precise there. here. See how that's really helping them pop out to the front again. It's a really nice look. And we're going to go over that part with a pink in the middle, but I'm going to do a little bit of a light soft gray around that. So a little more white in with that black, twist it out again, just that light, still, oh, it's actually a darker gray, but a little bit lighter than what we were doing. So a little bit of that around that little pink spot, that little pink area. All right, also where I've got overpaint that I need to come back in and correct are the daisies. I wanna be really precise and careful there, so make sure it's a really tiny point on the end. And then I'm just gonna make sure I go over those little loops.
So just following that little line that's already there. You see it got a little bit too soft with the overpaint that happened earlier. So now coming in with this little line around it will really help bring it back out to the front. So I'm going to rinse out my brush, dry it off, I've got this little section here, I want it to be just right back to that antique white. And then a little bit more of this white in here. just pure black that I'm bringing back in around the outer edge. Okay. I think, I think I'm, oh no, I need to outline that. With a little bit, a little bit of detail there. I think I'm done. All right, so a little bit brush again. Make sure it's just moist, no excess water in the brush. We don't want any water runs. Twist back into that black again. And I'm going to go ahead and come around this little, it's almost like a little baby sunflower. I'm not exactly sure what type of flower this is. I am definitely trying to learn all about flowers. So, bear with me. I do not know. I'm just starting the whole gardening thing this year. So, I have an app on my phone that I use. I just take pictures of things all around my garden. It tells me what it is. It's pretty neat. I think it's called Picture This, I think. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, I could do a little accent with my little bit brush, a little bit of white on this crown. Just a tiny little touch there. That's fun. Yeah, very cool. Okay, I think we're done. So beautiful, I love it. Princess Llama. Yeah, and so you can just sign your masterpiece. And I chose to do mine with just a really, you know, just pure white background. If you do want to add a little more texture to this, you know, you, you can certainly do that in the beginning. And, you know, that's, I'm not gonna do it on mine, well, I'm gonna show you a few things with the white. So, actually, as soon as I said, I'm not gonna do it, but I'll, I'll do a little bit. But, so I would take a bigger brush and just some pure white paint, it's just me, but, and just kind of crisscross it back and forth. So if you did wanna have some of that in the background, you certainly can. You can almost just kind of cheat like I'm doing now and just kind of do it. It's the same color, so you can just kind of have it all around the outer edges. But you want to eliminate any real obvious brush strokes, like going one direction or another. That's why I'm going to go ahead and just crisscross mine. So I get a little bit of that texture, which is quite lovely. And then I can just kind of bring that all the way around. So that's just a nice way to handle that. Or you do not have to do any of this. You can just leave it because the, the canvas is painted and primed white. So, but a lot of people really do kind of like this extra little touch here at the end. 
So just kind of crisscross it back and forth with a cross stroke. Quite lovely. Now my other suggestion is, now that I've done all this at the very end, but you could just paint all this to begin with too, at the very beginning. Just like I tell you with a lot of this too, with the traceable, you can certainly do that. And then you can certainly come back in later and just retrace right over the top. So a lot of beginners do that too. All right, beautiful. She's a cutie pie. <laughs> so this is all uh, ready to go on our website. Uh, we've got her as the Princess Llama. If you just tipsyartist.com slash online classes, all the kits are there. So she's real easy to find. I also have her under homeschool too. So she's got the option of having a little lesson plan too if you need that, which is really fun. We have curriculum with our paintings in, in that section. Um, so, and by the way, it is homeschool for all ages. So it's really fun. I actually think it's pretty cool. So you can just, even if you're just adults having a party, you can kind of pull out the page of trivia and find out all these facts about llamas. It's crazy. They're crazy cool creatures. So it's really fun curriculum. It's pretty neat. So yeah, so we have that. And of course you have everything you need. The, uh, you know, ta-da, the graphite paper. Be traceable, makes it super easy. And then of course, paint. And all my brushes are a mess, but you know, we've got like three brushes that come with it. And then your canvas and a bunch of curriculum and instructions in this beautiful video. So yay. Yeah, so tell your friends, share it, super fun. And I will see y'all soon. I'll be back, I think for sure. Saturday because I have an in-studio in show tomorrow so I probably won't be painting online tomorrow but definitely Saturday so unless something else comes up and I have to pop on here but you never know yeah so we'll see but anyway y'all have a beautiful rest of the day and we will see you soon Mwah.